Hello, friend. There's been something nagging you the last few months, hasn't there? Because you are an artist, or maybe you're a dreamer, or maybe both. And after years of careful social engineering, you find yourself a mere 100,000 Instagram likes away from stardom. You've watched in awe as the Pied Piper of profanity, Lord Beeple, knocked the art conishenti firmly on their cultured little bottoms, auctioning his art as an NFT at Christie's for 69 million buckaroonies. And now, clinging fervently to his coattails, comes a conveyor belt of celebrities, artists, and minor talents, filling up the internet with non-fungibles of every conceivable ilk, images, gifts, music, recycled bathwater, and more. And you, you dear artist, find yourself emboldened to dip a toe. This, you find yourself muttering. This is what you've been this waiting This is the answer for. to everything. This is how I rise to clout heaven. And God damn it, you're gonna do it. You're gonna mint an NFT of your very own and prove just how relevant and valuable you really are. Easy peasy. Ah, mais non, it is not easy. That last part, minting, what? Like actual mints. I mean, how do you even do that? What platform should you use? Is the art actually secure on the blockchain? Will I make millions? And what does it cost? Big questions that demand, well, actually, you know what? They're not that big, these questions, but they're just an awful lot of them, aren't they? But let's see if we can answer them for you, help you mint your first NFT, and maybe, just maybe, make an actual sale. Presented by Ledger and The Defiant, this is School of Block. In episode 11, we dug deep with a very large shovel into the why behind NFTs or non-fungible tokens, exploring how some people just want to collect a piece of history in the form of digital art, like this. A crypto punk doesn't look like much, but this could be worth a fortune. While others truly understand the power of NFTs through the functionality that can be built on top, much like this Tash, which is built on top. Ow! of my top lip. An NFT, you see, is a unique digital asset that can act as an access pass for perks, events, and much, much more besides. So now you know what they are, let's go about building our own. Now, where do we start? Well, for some artists, taking a physical artwork that already exists and making it digital is how they begin. So, if you have, for instance, a masterpiece like this delightful creature here, you're gonna have to get it somehow into your computer. But hey, this is a creative business. We are creative people. Let's see if we can do a little bit better than that, shall we? First things first, we need an idea. Green screen, check. Inflatable unicorn, check. Cowboy hat, check. Lack of dignity, <laughs> never. Now, some inspiration. What's the greatest film ever made? Well, that's easy, it's Doctor Strangelove. And in it, Slim Pickens, and that famous shot of him riding a missile. Hmm, perfect. Now we shoot. Next, we have to add a background, do some animation, add an explosion, some music, some sound, make it a GIF, and we're good to go. So, we have our animated art, and let's be honest, it is mustard. Now what? Well, for starters, there are an ever-expanding universe of platforms for minting and hosting NFT art, and each has their own specific experiences, expectations from artists and art lovers, and costs and drops and all that kind of thing. Probably the most popular of the NFT marketplaces right now is OpenSea, but closely followed by Nifty Gateway, Super Rare, and Rarible. Now, what's important to note here is that these platforms access your Ethereum wallet, so any NFT you hold will be viewable and tradable no matter which platform you use and no matter where you bought it. That's the genius of NFTs. So, what you're looking for now is discoverability. How easy is it to find great work or be discovered yourself? 
OpenSea is undoubtedly the granddaddy OG of NFT marketplaces, and it's the place I usually go first to look for a deal. Think of it like the eBay of NFTs. But because of that, it can be hard to cut through the noise. So today, we're going to look at a different platform, and that platform is Rarible. So here we go. This is the exciting moment. We're going to create an NFT on Rarible. Now, before you start, there are a couple of things that you need to know. Firstly, you need to have a way of interacting with Rarible itself. It's a Web3 protocol, which means you need a Web3 wallet, and that would be an Ethereum wallet like Metamask, but you can use something else like Portis or Ledger to interact with Rarible. In this instance, I'm using Metamask. I have a Metamask a uh, Chrome extension installed here, and there is my MetaMask, and that will allow me to, to do everything that I need to do in these future steps. The other thing I needed to do was create, firstly, a video file, which is the animation that I made earlier, and that is, that's this. So that's our lovely animation that we made based on Slim Pickens. And I also made a GIF, and the reason I, we need a GIF as well will all become clear later on. But now let's get on to Rarible itself. So this is the Rarible website. I have my uh, account logged in already via MetaMask. And that's usually how it works on these Web3 protocols. You use your wallet to log in. No Google or Facebook logins, it's your Ethereum wallet, which is nice. So now we just go to this big blue button here, which says create and um, click on that. This is where you might get a bit confused because you have single or multiple as an option. Now, in the case of multiple, let's say you have 10 copies of something that you want to sell. That's when you use multiple. But in our instance, we're going to just use a single one. So one only, one NFT that we're going to create to, to mint. So I click on single. And then I've got a couple of options here. So the first one, it says choose file. Now this file that I upload now is going to be the actual artwork. It's going to be the thing that people are actually buying. Okay, so I want the video file. And it's worth bearing in mind here that you want to try and keep these as small as possible because the same rules that used to apply for web compression apply for NFTs. They can't really handle massive files at the moment. So you, you will see here, under the upload cover, it says there's a max limit of 30 megabytes. We're comfortably within that because I kept the compression fairly low. So that's the video part. Now we have the cover part. Now in the old days, it used to just say upload another file. Now it's pretty clear that the cover is what's going to be displayed on a website or on a marketplace like OpenSea. And that is the lightweight, super easy kind of looping gear for reduced version of your file that people are going to see when they're browsing through a marketplace. And when they click on it, they'll get the larger version they'll be able to see, which is the video file. So if we click on that, I can now use the GIF that I created earlier. So this will now become the display. So as you can see here in the preview window, you get that GIF auto playing and looping over and over and over. And that's the nice thing about GIFs because they loop, you get this constant kind of visual refresher that something is happening on the page. Now, the next option that we see is put on marketplace. Now, there's something to bear in mind here, which is these NFTs exist on the Ethereum blockchain. They don't exist on Rarible. They exist on the Ethereum blockchain. Rarible is simply a mechanism by which you can mint them. It's a vehicle for coding smart contracts, but it doesn't own the NFT and the NFT doesn't exist there. And this is fundamentally something that's fascinating about NFTs. I can mint an NFT on Rarible and the moment it is minted, I can then go on OpenSea or any other marketplace and sell it there instead of on Rarible. So in this particular instance, I do want to sell this NFT for a fixed price. But I have also got the option to do a timed auction. So if I do that, I can set a period of time for which buyers can place bids. So you set a window of time and you market your NFT and you expect people to put bids in and then the highest bidder at the end of that time period will win the auction. And then you have an unlimited auction, which is just, you know, leave it there until somebody decides to buy it and you decide to accept their price. So let's decide what we want to sell this thing for. What do we think it is worth? Well, that is a very difficult question. We can, of course, not sell it. We can decide not to put it on the marketplace. But of course, 
once you have it and once you've minted it, you can then subsequently put it on the marketplace. So I think in this instance, I am not going to do that. But I am going to give it a title. We'll get back to the choose collection bit in a second. I'm just going to give it a title, which is wrecked in the key of F minor. And then the, for the description, something neat along the lines of inspired by Dr. Strangelove and created for School of Block. Presented by Ledger and the Defiant. And then we get to the really interesting bit, royalties. So it gives you suggested price point, 10%, 20%, 30% on these royalties. What is a royalty? What does that actually mean? Well, it works like this. If you sell your NFT and then somebody subsequently sells it, you get 10% of that secondary sale. And then the one after that, and then the one after that, and then the one after that, forever. So anytime anybody sells this NFT, you get a cut for as long as the Ethereum blockchain exists, which is pretty profound. Now I can create the item. So it'll start to get a little bit slow at this point. There's a few different reasons for that. Firstly, Ethereum is really slow right now. And all of these things take a little bit of time. So we will, okay, there we go. So we have the first step we need to do is approve uh, the rareable collection. I actually minted some NFTs earlier, this is a test. But what will happen here is you will be asked to sign a transaction and it cost me about $8 when I did it. But that is allowing your wallet to interact with the rareable contract. Now, when I talked about uh, you setting up your own smart contract, then you have to bear the cost of setting up that contract. Whereas here, all you have to do is approve your wallet, approve the contract to interact with your wallet. And that cost me about $8 and now I can actually mint the NFT and we'll see just how expensive that is going to be. So I click start now. Metamask pops up and it asks me to confirm a transaction. And if we look, the cost of minting is the gas fee involved and that is $104. So this single NFT is gonna cost me $104 to mint. That is a lot. And that is why at the moment it's been sort of prohibitive to, to issue a lot of NFTs on Ethereum. So we're gonna go ahead and confirm because you know we're doing a demonstration here. So we're gonna confirm that. And then we're gonna to have to wait because we need the transaction to go through. So what I can do for the sake of this is speed it up. And if I wanna do that, I'm gonna to have to spend $130. And that is what we're going to do. Again, for the sake of the demo, but you know, if you're making your first NFT, these costs are gonna add up significantly. And you're gonna to have to think about how much you wanna sell your NFT for because you know, already we're $230 in the hole just to get this transaction through. So I'm gonna speed that up and hopefully it will go through quite fast. And we're just gonna go speed it up. And then when I snap my fingers, it'll be done. Okay, so I now have a message on my phone from the My Ether Wallet wallet, which is connected to my MetaMask, telling me that the transaction has gone through. And if I look on Rarible, there is wrecked in the key of F minor. It's real, it's happened. And now I can put it on sale. But wasn't that expensive? Surely there's a better way. And you know what? There might be. While creating our first NFT, we've learned a few things about them. Firstly, like many things in crypto, there are literally a gazillion options ahead of you. Now, this is all new technology and new territory, and artists and entrepreneurs alike are experimenting with the, all the different mechanisms and ways that they can create, host, sell NFTs, and provide functionality for them. It's all very, very exciting. But... This is fine. Ah. <sighs> Those damn gas fees. And let's be honest here, it's extremely expensive to launch an NFT on Ethereum right now, especially if you want to launch one under your own smart contract. But fear not, because there are alternatives on their way. We've got the likes of Algorand, Solana, and Nier, who are building fast, cheap blockchains that will allow you to do everything you can do on Ethereum, just much faster and much, much cheaper. And on top of that, they're building in additional functionality, particularly around royalties as well. And that is exciting because it means all of those barriers to entry are going to go away. And one platform in particular is making waves right now, and its name is Polygon. So just for a laugh, I thought we'd see 
how quickly and how cheaply we could launch an NFT on Polygon. So let's get going. So just for fun, we're going to do an NFT on Polygon. And where we need to go to is mintnft.today. Now you have to set up the Polygon browser extension to operate uh, on the Polygon network. I've already set that up, but that's not really the point of this exercise. We just want to see if it's fast and if it's cheap. So I need a file that is less than 10 megabytes. That's going to upload now. And I'm going to call it rect in the key of F minor. And now you will see the file being uploaded to IPFS. We want the file type ERC721. That's good. Um, give it a title. And now we can mint the NFT. The JSON Dota has been uploaded to IPFS, which is the Interplanetary File Service. We'll cover that in a future episode. And it's been minted. That's it. Done. That cost, well, nothing, basically. And it was done in a jiffy. So that's pretty awesome. That's the power of Layer 2 over Layer 1. Layer 1, we spent $230, and it took a while. I had to speed it up. Eventually, it was quite fast. But um, if you do it on, uh, on Polygon, it's blazing fast and costs almost nothing. But of course, if anyone wants to in or see their, the NFT, then they have to go onto Polygon. But Polygon has a version of OpenSea already built on it. So you can trade on OpenSea or, or an OpenSea version that exists on Polygon already. And this is just the beginning. All of these things are going to open up and get a lot faster and a lot better. So layer two, definitely one path into the future. But we also have layer ones like Solana like Nier, like Polkadot, that are going to open up even more avenues for value creation and for people who create NFT art or who create any kind of NFT to really get started for a minimal startup cost. And that is what we want. So next week, we're going to look at the wonderful world of DeFi. Polygon plays a huge part in that. And that will be the next episode that we do. I'm really looking forward to that one because at the Defiant, DeFi is in our blood. It's our core. It's the thing that we're most passionate about. I'm excited to share that with you. You've been watching School of Block presented by Ledger and the Defiant. Demystifying decentralization one block at a time. Don't forget to subscribe. And drop us a like if you came out of this ready to create your own NFTs. I made one and I'm ready. Here's to your financial freedom. See what I did there? See what I did there? Should we put this online on OpenSea? Maybe we can make like a mint. <laughs>